All right, so this is going to be a Costco sale item review of this Oster French door air fryer oven. So um, normally it's $199.99, it was $50 off, so about $150. All right, and let's go ahead and take a look. There you go. It's gonna be hard to record this because it's so large of a device. All right, you can read all of that on your own. You can see it has these two doors. The doors are linked together, so when you open one, it opens both. Okay, you can see that. 40% faster preheat. Same thing on this side, so there's not really a point to show that. Here's the thing. It says about both doors opening with a single pull. Um, I was told some people didn't like this because the doors are spring-loaded, so if you don't open it all the way, it will close on its own. You can see household use, one-year warranty. I don't know what all this stuff is down here. Is that shipping information? There's the model information here. This is like a shipping information. I don't know why it says this side up, because then the thing is upside down. But, um, yeah, all right, let's flip this over and open it up. Oh, this thing is so big to manage. Let me see if I can adjust the camera so you can see better. It might be pointing too far down. Let's flip this up a little bit more. There we go. Let's cut this thing open. This side open. Okay. So got this. Pops open just like that. You can see the packaging. If you open yours, you don't want to you don't want it, you want to return it. You can see how it was packaged. They have this metal tray on top. I think this is like the crumb tray. There's this here for pulling it out. Okay, I'm just gonna take that plastic off. Set that aside, and here you go, there's that tray. We'll set that aside. Got a piece of cardboard here. Don't need that. Then you got this air frying or dehydrating tray. Okay, looks like this. Indented here, so it's not completely flat. Uh, flat. It bows out here. Feels a little greasy, so probably wanna wash it before you use it. Feels like a... There's some oil on it, not like cooking oil. It might be like machine oil. Then you got this tray here, also in a bag. Okay, comes like this. There's some feet on this. I don't know why it has this tray. I guess we'll figure it out soon once we open everything up. Okay, then we got an instruction booklet here. Right, we'll go over that later. Got this tray. That's a lot of pieces. There's some broken cardboard stuff in there. But you got this metal tray. Okay. I think it's aluminum. Set that aside. And then the oven's there, so we're gonna have to take this cardboard out, or the styrofoam out. Okay comes out like this if you need to put it back all right this side like that okay we're gonna set that aside this thing the plastic actually opens from the front so it's um, you just slide it over from the back let's see we're gonna have to get this thing out now so how can we easily carry this thing out that here Maybe from the back here, there's a little rubber stopper. So I'm gonna carry this out. Wow, it's stuck. Come on, stay down, box. It might help to do this like sideways or something. So you can do it like that and you can just slide the whole thing out. Put that 
the box out of my way. There we go. Okay, so we got this thing. It's in styrofoam, of course. So we are gonna get that out. Okay, you can see the opening of the bag. Let's see. There's no easy way to get this out. I don't know if the handles are designed for lifting. Um, I'm gonna get underneath the handles and then the back here is kind of bow bowed out. Let's see if we can do that. I'll use my knee to hold down the styrofoam. There we go. Side. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna put the styrofoam back in the box. And the other styrofoam in the box. baggies and cardboard in the box. Okay, let's set this aside. Then we got this. Now we gotta get that out of the box. Let's get a little bit closer now. So we're gonna lift this up, get that out from underneath. Lift this side, that out from underneath, tip it over. All right. So here we have the oven. So I'm going to lower the thing all the way and we're going to get a view from the front. Actually, let me spin it around so you can see from all sides. Let's get the box out of the way. Okay. So, oh, I guess we'll lower it now. Let's tilt the camera up. Here you can see what it looks like. There's some tape holding the doors closed. So let me show you real quick what I mean when we take this tape off. So I'm gonna open it by, well I guess you can't really do that because it opens both doors so you have to peel the tape off. I guess you can cut it in the center but I don't want to cut on thing. So let's peel this out. Okay. There we go. So as you can see, when you open, oh, there's some more tape down here. Okay, get that tape out as well. Okay. I don't know why they need all this tape. The styrofoam, I think, should actually hold it together, so unnecessary. But as you open one, you can see it opens both doors for you. So as you open it all the way, it's okay. But let's say you have it like, this like 90 degrees it's gonna smash your hands and if it's really hot you're gonna burn yourself so you want to make sure like even here it closes itself so you want to actually open it completely all the way so that is somewhat of a bad design even if you just barely knock this see it's like closes itself I'm just I'm not even pushing it that much let me zoom out a bit or move this back so you can kind of see better all right, so here you can see, I moved it less than an inch, maybe like two centimeters or less than two centimeters. And that's enough for it to close itself. So you wanna be careful with that. You don't wanna end up with this smashing on your hands. So make sure wherever you're putting this, you have good clearance on the left side here because if this door is hitting the wall or anything, yeah, it's gonna smash on your hands has a slight scratch up here, but that's okay. Shouldn't affect the function. All right, then you got some air vents around, all the way around on the sides. There were, if you notice, there's air vents on the top. There's this rubber piece here. I think that's just to keep you from putting it all the way against the wall, all right? And I don't know what this pocket, oh. Is this the air vent? What's this plastic thing? Well, anyways, let's get the, cable out of here so it wraps around there and then they just got some tape holding this in place which is annoying um, I probably have to use the knife to cut this because I'm not going to be able to find where the oh okay never mind they taped it here so let's see if we can undo this tape okay there we go take that bag off 
All right, I don't know what this is for. I guess when I read the instructions, we'll find out. I think it's an air vent because I can stick my finger slightly sideways that way. Okay, and then you got more air vents, it looks like, in here. Okay, you got the controls all over here. Let me actually take the phone camera out and show you close up. Okay, here you can see the different options. Air fry, bake, toast, convection, broil, dehydrate, slow cook, roast, pizza, keep warm. You can set the temperatures, the time, start and cancel. All right, give you a look at the inside. You got these heating elements, it seems, all right on the bottom as well as on the top it's very cavernous this part actually bows outwards completely so you can i guess they do that so you can put a pizza it's really um this is pretty deep it sticks out like another probably two or three inches um then you got this for the convection blows the hot air okay i don't know if there's a heating element inside there as well but, um, yeah, actually, let's see if we can see on the back. So, at the furthest point, eh, actually, that's maybe like two inch or so from the, where it bows out. But it does allow you to put like larger, rounder things like a big chicken or turkey or something in the pizzas. All right, so, anyways, we're gonna go over the instruction booklet and then we'll plug it in and we'll try air frying some french fries and see how it goes. All right. We'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so let's go over the instruction booklet here. User manual, extra large French door, digital air fryer oven. Here you can see the model number. All right, and oh, I don't like these kinds of books. So this is the kind where you kind of just unfold it and it opens up into a giant, like a map. I don't like this design, but um, that's how they designed it. Okay, so this is how they do it. I'm gonna fold it over so you can kind of see this easier. Important safeguards. So I'm gonna just quickly just go over this, then I'm gonna read it and I'll tell you any important things that I saw, okay? So if you lost your instruction booklet and you need this for some reason, you can go ahead and read through this. Hopefully I'm going through the right, okay, third page. Okay, fourth page. How does this work? Okay, fifth page is down here. Okay, sixth page. Is there more on the back? There is. Oh, these are in Spanish. Okay. So we don't need all those extra pages. Those are in Spanish. And then we got the warranty thing here. So I'm going to have to fold this back up and then I will show you that. Here's the warranty information. 
made by Sunbeam actually and Oster is not really the brand or the company it's Sunbeam okay and it says not to return it if you have problems with it all right so let's go ahead I'm gonna read over this and then we're gonna set it up we'll set the date and, or the time and then we're going to try cooking some french fries in it. Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so one thing, because I saw how flat the top was, I was going to put, um, we have a ninja foodie thing. I was going to put that on top, and here you can see, where does it say there? Do not place, wait, where'd it go? Huh, I lost the spot. Let me find it, I'll be back. Oh, here it is. Okay, so it says a fire may occur if the countertop oven is covered, touching, or near flammable materials, including curtains, draperies, towels, walls, and the like. When in operation, or when in operation, do not store any item on top of the appliance when in operation. So if you're going to put stuff on top of it, make sure to take it down before using it. All right, so I'm going to read over some more and I'll be back. Okay, because I know a lot of people will like to do this. Um, it says do not cover the crumb tray or any part of the oven with metal foil. This will cause overheating of the oven. So I like to usually cover those things if it's easier to remove with foil so it's easier to clean up. I just take it out and throw it away. But it tells you not to do that because it can, again, cause it to overheat. All right, and then after each use, you want to empty the crumb tray. And yeah, all right, I'm going to read some more and I'll be back. Alright, so here's another thing in case you have different types of um, surfaces. So it says some countertop and table surfaces are not designed to withstand the prolonged heat generated by certain appliances. Do not set the heated unit on a finished wood table. And we recommend placing a hot pad or trevet, trevet, I don't know how you pronounce that, it's probably trevet, under your countertop oven to prevent possible damage to the surface. Alright. And also during initial use, it's normal to see some slight mo uh, smoke and odor um, because the stuff is just like from the factory. Maybe there's some oils burning off or the outer layer of metal is basically oxidizing and burning. But um, yeah, that's normal. And after a few uses, that smell and smoke should go away. All right, going to continue reading and I'll be back. Okay, so this part goes over the different trays here. So you can see here the removable wire rack or broil rack is number one. So if you can see number one, that's the one that I saw underneath. Oh, that's why you have that metal tray, I think, slides underneath it. Um, then on number two, you have the removable air fry uh, rack or basket model dependent. So it might be a rack or a basket, right? Three, you have the removable crumb tray which is it even showing in this picture? Why did they show number two twice? Oh, it's one the air fryer basket and one's the air fryer tray. All right, but I don't see a number three here, which is weird. I'm thinking they labeled this number two is supposed to be a three. That looks like the crumb tray. I don't know, I'm, that's kind of weird. All right, four, baking pan, all right, five, three rack positions. Okay, so they show you on the picture they have three different rack positions here. Six, interior light. Okay, there's a light inside. Seven, time temperature display. Okay, you already know where that is. Eight, control buttons, pizza pan. Nine, a pizza pan. Okay, ours didn't come with a pizza pan. All right, I'm going to continue reading over and I'll be back. Okay, the controls are pretty... Um, they it basically speaks for itself. Bake, select to bake. Air fry, select to air fry. Toast, select to toast. Turbo convect, so this is to bake with convection. So if you want like a convection oven, you can use that. Broil, select to broil. All right, dehydrate, select to dehydrate. Roast, select to roast. Slow cook, so okay. So pretty much everything is self-explanatory there. Pizza or wings um, for baking a large pizza or air frying wings. Then you got keep warm setting to keep oven warm. I don't know why you would just keep the oven warm. I guess to, if your food's in there, you just keep it warm. Then there's a time button to adjust the time, temperature, or toasting shade. Temperature, adjust temperature, of course. Clock sets the clock. Wait, so, okay, I guess time, they mean like the length of time, and clock is just for the clock, right? Cancel stops it, 
and start starts it cooking. All right, there you go. Oven is on when display icons are illuminated and flashing and pressing the cancel button twice will turn it off. All right, I'm going to continue reading and I'll be back. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, um, when it's new, you want to clean it. So it says to clean the rack, tray, and pan with hot water and a small amount of dishwashing liquid and a non-abrasive sponge or cleaning pad. All right, so I'm going to continue reading. Okay, so here's the other thing that I was talking about where the doors open. Okay, where'd it go? Okay, so... Always use the door handles when opening and closing the appliance. The doors open to a wide angle for better access to the oven. You will hear the latch mechanism engage when the doors are fully opened. Doors will not remain open unless the latch mechanism is engaged. Always fully open doors before accessing the oven. Uh, please keep at least 6 inches or 152 millimeters clear on all sides of the appliance to allow the doors fully to fully open. So whatever you measure for the oven, you want to make sure you have an additional six inches um, to the sides of it. So that way when you open it, it's not going to close on you. All right. And here's the thing to set the clock. You push the clock button, the clock will flash twice. Use the arrow keys to set the hour, push the clock button again, and then use the arrow key to set the minutes. Push the clock button once more or the start button and the time will be set. All right. You can also change it between Fahrenheit and Celsius if you want. So when it's not being used, you can press the temperature plus or minus button for three seconds to switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. All right. So the display will flash three times indicating the new temperature units and yeah. All right. I'm going to continue reading and I'll be back. Okay. So for the pizza function, it's automatically 400 degrees Fahrenheit and you can't adjust it so if you want to cook your pizza at different temperatures it tells you to use the bake function so I'm not sure why it uses the 400 degrees but that's what it does all right and here you go for two pizzas put the two pizzas place the pizzas on the wire and the air fry racks cook the pizzas for about um, one half the recommended time and then switch the rack positions to allow them to uniformly cook on top and bottom all right, and then if you want to use all the other functions, I guess you can read that and see. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to read some more. All right, so just like the pizza one, the dehydrating function is automatically 150 degrees Fahrenheit and can't be adjusted. And you can set it for up to six hours for dehydrating. All right, then you got slow cook stuff. And yeah, I'll read some more. And I'll be all right, so for the slow cooking function, you want to use a covered oven proof um, cookware. And it says you don't want to exceed 14 pounds when empty. All right. Wait. Always use oven safe cookware that does not exceed 14 pounds when empty. So I don't know what the full weight capacity the oven can handle. But yeah, they tell you also not to overfill it and everything. Okay. I'm going to continue reading and I'll be back. All right. So it says not to use the... Um, the broil pan under the rack in the lower position so that metal rack you can actually slide the broiling pan underneath it I think that's to like catch any uh, runoff juices um, so you don't want to use that in the bottom position because then it'll be right over the heating element and that can burn it I think all right and then they have instructions on how to wash it you don't want to dunk it in water of course um, yeah all right and then of course they have things for these Problems. If you overcooked or undercooked the foods, you can change stuff. Burnt smells. If it doesn't turn on, if only the heating element is, if only one heating element is heating up, they have instructions. Heating element doesn't stay on. And also, if you can't change the function button, then they just have these for showing how long to cook stuff. So I'm gonna try some frozen fries. All right, we got these thick cuts. Um, 450 degrees, 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to try cooking those and we'll see how they turn out. All right, so let's go ahead and get the oven started and we'll be back. All right, so I already washed off all the trays with warm water and soap. So let's go ahead now and set this up. So let's do the clock. What time is it right now? 4.46. All right, so let's set the thing to 4, 12. Oh, it goes by military time so that's uh 16 and then what did i say 446 okay so 46 okay holding the button works for setting the time 
We're just going to set 47 because it's probably close to that right now. All right, and there we go. So we set the time, 447. Um, that's kind of weird. I didn't set four, so I guess it did it by itself, right? Right? If I do 16, yeah. Okay, it automatically sets it to 447. So it's weird. You set the time by military time or 24-hour time, and then it goes into the 12-hour time. So that's kind of strange. All right, anyways, we're going to air fry. So here's the broiling tray that I was talking about. It goes underneath this tray, or you can put it on top, of course, if you want. Okay, um, but we're going to take this out for now since we're going to be doing air frying. Sorry, we're going to be doing air frying. We're going to be, they said to use the middle for the best position. We're going to put the fries on there. I don't know if I need to preheat it to 450 or not, but um, I never preheat the ovens on the other things. So I'm just going to put the fries in there, 450 degrees, and we'll see how it turns out. So it looks like we can actually tilt this or have it slightly out. I don't know if the fries will all fall off, but let me try it this way because, okay, it looks like it's working. But now I'm ending up with all the stuff all over my table. Oh, that's too many fries. I don't want that many. All right, so let's put some back. I'm only going to cook a few just to test it. So, it like that. Okay, and hopefully that's enough for testing. All right, we're just going to kind of space them out a bit, put that in there, and yeah, now we have a big mess on the table here. <laughs> There's fry crumbs everywhere. All right, anyways, we're going to air fry, so air fry, 450, and we're just going to start it, or do I have to set the time? Okay, it's on preheating mode right now, um, so I'm going to put it for 25 minutes, I think, and we'll start it. Okay, so now it's air frying. We're gonna let that cook and we'll be back. All right, I'll see you guys when it's ready. All right, so one thing I noticed here, if you open this and you're cooking, it doesn't shut off. So just keep that in mind. And another thing, the air, it has that little black plastic chimney in the back. So you don't want to, right now I have it underneath um, cabinets here. So that's not good because all the hot air, steam, and like oils, as you can see, it's getting stuff under here. That's not good. So let me see if I can show you here. So here you have this chimney. All the hot air and everything is coming out from this. It's blowing up from that. So if you're going to put it under a cabinet, you might want to shield it with something. But keep in mind, it's going to damage your cabinets if you leave them under there without anything protecting it so you do want to have it uncovered all right so that kind of sucks because this is a nice flat surface um, right now it's not burning hot and it's already been like six minutes or so um, actually like seven eight minutes almost um, so this isn't super hot like over here is actually pretty hot but over here is not so I don't know, it says not to store stuff on top of it while cooking, so that would kind of be annoying. You're having all this wasted space up here to do nothing, and then you can't really do anything with that space there because now you're going to screw up your cabinets. So I'm going to move this thing over, and we're going to let it keep cooking, all right? So let's go ahead and put that there. We're going to move this thing over. I don't think you're supposed to move it while it's cooking, but yeah. All right, so I moved it over there, at least temporarily. For my house setup and everything, I might end up returning it. We'll see how the fries come out. But again, with my setup, because this thing is here and this blows hot air, I feel like a lot of these devices, they should design it to where the air blows out the front. I would really like a device where the hot air just blows out the front somewhere. Um, because then you're not constrained by the walls blocking it, you're not constrained by the cabinets overhead, and if your house is cold, you can have a nice heater here. <laughs> you can just stand in front of it and yeah. So I don't know if anyone's ever gonna make an oven with that design where the hot air comes out of the front instead of out the back or the sides. Um, let me see the sides here actually. This is actually really cold. Um, the bottom here is pretty warm, but up here, 
is in the middle is not hot at all it's cold and then up here on the corner is also um, pretty warm but it's not like burning hot here it's quite a bit out I can't leave my hand there so that's pretty hot down here is pretty cold um, but that's on the air fry mode I don't know if on the oven bake modes it'll be different or the toast modes um, but yeah up here is pretty hot but I can leave my hand like less than a centimeter away and that's no problem so you don't really need to worry about these sides um, if you're putting this close to your walls on the sides but again they said to allow six inches of space so when you open the door as you can see it sticks out so much from here so that's a lot of wasted space on the side they should have put the air vent on the side or maybe blow the air so from the side this way from the outside I don't know um, that's just my opinion on this um, this side same thing you can get really close to it so the sides aren't really an issue it's only the back here I can actually feel the air all the way from the top and that's that part is pretty far down and my hand is hovering like an inch or two above the oven and I can feel the warm air again um, the air is not too hot my main concern is this is blowing out the moisture the um, steam the uh, what do you call it, the grease it's all gonna come out here you might not notice it when you're using it a few times but if you use this pretty often you're gonna end up with like grease all over I don't know if you, you can see these cabinets from cooking so long all this grease came from like the stove because our um, air vent thing here broke and here you can see um, and then up there you can see the grease it go it builds up over time so the design here where it's just blowing out the back if you have this under a cabinet it's gonna be really bad again I really wish they had this maybe blowing out the front I don't know if there's a way you can make like an adapter but I don't want to mess around with that and the back here that's pretty hot too so they have this little rubber nub thing to prevent you from putting that up against the wall um, but again this back piece gets really hot so yeah you don't want that um, too close to the wall either I guess that's why they put that rubber piece there you can actually keep your hand really close to that without getting burned so it's not a problem the main concern again is this little exhaust pipe okay and the fries sound like they're getting all nice and crispy we got about 13 a little bit less than 13 minutes left um, the LED or this light this panel display doesn't actually flicker like that it's uh, nice and solid the air fry button does blink on and off but uh, the oh I got it to fix itself so yeah it doesn't flicker it's like this okay solid so I don't know why it was flickering before oh there you go so it's adjusting to the lighting maybe there we go there now it's solid like this okay um, and yeah now that's gonna probably be a pain to clean up at least it's a nice flat surface but it's pretty big so to put it in the sink um, it's kind of tough to wash this in the sink it might be nice for using in the dishwasher because it's a nice flat surface but uh, cleaning it by hand it's a bit large to be like turning it around in the sink to rinse it off and stuff um, and then we got this of course um, not too bad but uh, this design with these wires going crisscross like this makes it a little bit difficult to wash as well but it does need to be like that to support heavier stuff so I understand the design but um yeah and then this air frying tray with burnt on grease is going to be very difficult to wash as well um, so I don't know for my use we'll see um, if we keep it or not but it's all riding on these fries if they air fry well I might keep it if they don't I'll have to think about what I might cook in here that might um, be worth keeping this but other than that we'll see you once the fries are ready all right bye all right so it's been about 18 minutes 30 seconds stop flickering please why isn't it come on there you go there you go it needs the shadow <laughs> And you can already see a lot of the fries are pretty dark and crispy. So I might have to stop it early. 25 minutes might be too long. So now it's been about almost 19 minutes. And I've been like opening and closing the door. So let's see. I'm going to take some of this out. 
and we'll see. Some of it actually back there is already burnt. So it takes less than the 25 minutes it says. It says 20 to 25 minutes. I didn't cook anywhere near a pound and a half. Maybe that's why. This basket design, it's um, not too good because you can't really shake it around to stir up the fries. Um, but it's nice for like big flat items. Um, anyways, I'm going to pull out the fries and yeah, we'll give them a taste. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, so let's actually stop this, so we'll push the cancel button. Uh-oh, I made some little oily fingerprints on there, so let me... Actually, when that even... It's not wiping off. Is it gonna wipe off? And it's just getting worse. <laughs> okay, so I'll probably clean it up with some water and soap later. But anyways, let's go ahead, open this all the way, and let's take the fries out. I'm going to put them in like a big bowl or something. Um, this design also, I'm not sure how I'm going to pull these out to pour them in a bowl. It doesn't have like a funnel or anything, so that's also going to be quite difficult. All right. Uh, anyways, let's go get a bowl and we'll be back. All right, so we got a bowl. Let me see if I can tilt this a bit to make it a better view. Let me raise this up. Okay, so let's use the oven mitt. Let's take this thing out. Okay, I guess we can leave it slightly out and then you can use some tongs or something to get these out. All right, they're not burning hot or anything, so that's good. I can actually grab them with my hand. That one's like super, super crispy. So, I don't know. I don't know anybody that's gonna take the time to just grab them out like this. So if anybody has a better method of getting all of these off this tray and into like a dish or a bowl, I'd like to know. But um, it seems to work as long as the food isn't gonna burn our hands. All right, so the burnt ones taste burnt, of course. <laughs> I'm gonna have to clean up that crumb tray. The crumb tray doesn't grab everything, as you can see, as you're getting stuff, all these crumbs are getting over the front here. And then because of the design, it's difficult to get these out. Maybe if you have another tray that's big enough to just tip this whole tray over into it, it'll work. But um, yeah, all right, so as for the fries, here you go. Hmm. They actually turned out very nice and crispy. Um, I like the way they cook the fries. I am going to have to add some seasoning. Um, I'd say in terms of how it cooked these fries compared to the other air fryers, it did a really good job. I actually like how these fries turned out. So, yeah. For cooking fries, if you're okay with dealing with all the crumbs and the mess here, um, I think it's pretty good. Again, you will have to keep it out from underneath the cabinets if you want your cabinets to last a long time and not get all coated with um, with grease and steam and damaging them. So keep that in mind. They are good for air frying. I might keep it around. It's pretty nice. It's just that limitation with the um, where I have to put it. So I guess depending on the design of your house, that might not be an issue. Um, the top is getting warmer now. Um, again, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to store stuff on top of there. If you have like the metal trays or something like this, it probably won't be an issue to leave it on top. Um, just because of how it's like aerated and you only have those points contacting it. So you can probably leave this on top. It might scratch it up a bit, but you can probably leave that on top. It'll probably be fine. Um, I don't know. They don't recommend leaving stuff on there, but again, with it having that air gap, it's probably fine. Plus these will just help cool it down. Um, but yeah, the fries turned out great. They are a little bit uneven. As you can see, some are like almost burnt and some of them are good. You can hear the crunch to them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so... I don't know if there's an easier way for this cleanup. If there is, that would be nice. 
and again they said don't put foil on it so I don't know about that um, and the crumbs here I'll have to figure out some kind of some kind of thing with that because I don't like that oh also these doors don't insulate as well as a regular oven look if you can see how thin they are and then also because there's like an air gap so keep that in mind you do feel a lot of warmth coming away from the front it doesn't keep it all inside the oven um, but yeah other than that it did cook the fries really well um, so hopefully you guys will enjoy this video hopefully um, it helped you decide whether this is a good device for you or a good appliance um, Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Alright, so I found a nice way to clean this is you take this tray out. You can actually put this tray here. And then you can actually just like wipe with a paper towel or something. Just pull all the crumbs that fell down into this groove here or up here. And you can just throw them all onto the tray. And this tray, I just wiped it off pretty easily. Um... Because it's made of aluminum, it dissipates heat really fast. So this tray, I think less than even 5-10 minutes after cooking, I was able to pull this tray out and it wasn't burning hot with my bare hands. Um, these, of course, these are like stainless steel or something, so you'll burn yourself. Don't pull that out. Uh, one thing I wish is they made this tray a lot larger, and they made one that goes all the way across. So if you look at how far this thing sticks out to the edge... It sticks all the way to the edge. The crumb tray, they should have done the same thing. They should, should have had it come out all the way to the edge here. At least that, that's my opinion. I feel like it should go all the way to the edge. Because you don't want stuff dripping down from here and then dripping into this. And then the crumb tray does nothing. So I guess you can hold, put the crumb tray out slightly like that. <laughs> and maybe that will work. And then you don't have crumb tray in the back. But then cleaning the back is going to be more more difficult so yeah they should have they should have extended the crumb tray all the way to the edge that would have been a much nicer design um they did it with this so i don't see why they couldn't just extend this like one or two centimeters um but yeah other than that this tray i feel also should have just been the whole length instead of having it attached to this thing i feel like it should have been its own thing that goes into this and you can just um, connect it there but I guess they did that so when stuff drips it won't splash as much since it's um, closer to the stuff that's cooking on top but again I would have liked this to be a full-size tray that can fit all on its own that you don't have to use this with it but anyways that's my review thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one I might keep it just for the fries all right bye